I am here on location today in this beautiful log cabin lodge because we are talking about building a house of prayer for yourself and teaching you how to use prayer tools. This is the first in a short series on prayer tools because here's the thing. A lot of people want to pray effectively and powerfully and fervently. They want to pray with authority, but they're not sure how to do it. And they feel like everybody else is better at praying than they are. Have you ever felt that way? If so, I want to comfort you, reassure you, encourage you, and equip you today. Stay tuned. I have in my hand a tool belt. This is a tool belt that any handyman might use or any weekend warrior might use doing DIY projects in your house. And people hang all sorts of tools in this tool belt, hammers, nails, screwdrivers, tape measure, chalk box, you name it. You could put it in a tool belt like this. But when people pray powerfully and effectively, what you don't realize, and sometimes they don't even realize, is that what they are doing is simply getting tools out of their tool belt. They're picking up spiritual tools that they have learned over time and they're wielding them, using them under the leading and the influence of the Holy Spirit as he leads them through the prayer. And so I want you to know that you can use the same tools. You can learn how to use the hammers in prayer. You can learn how to use a scraper in prayer. You can learn where is the function for the screwdriver and where is the function for the oil of the Holy Ghost? How does he help? How does he grease up your prayers to make them powerful and filled with anointing? Prayer is simply talking to God. But there are specific ways that God says in his word that we should talk to him. There are specific ways to pray. And there are tools of spiritual warfare that you can learn to wield and be powerful and effective. And over time, they become so second nature to you that you might not even realize that you are using them. You might not even ever have to stop and think, now which tool should I get out for this? So it's going to be a great way for you to learn how to pray powerfully and effectively and make it second nature. Okay, let's get started with the first tool. The first tool when you approach the Lord is you sit down alone with the Lord. Okay. Now, um, this is just for learning and for your one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. Of course, it's fine to pray with other people and congregationally at church and in prayer meetings. But when you're first learning, I recommend that you sit down alone with the Lord to learn these tools so that you can get used to the way that they work and get used to talking to Holy Spirit and hearing Him, and receiving from Him and praying in His ways that He prescribes we should pray. Get used to that without the pressure of outside people looking at you, Okay. Jesus did, in fact, say that when you pray, go into your room and close your door and pray to your Father who is in heaven, and your Father who sees in the secret place will reward you in the open. So praying alone with the Lord is not the only way we can pray, but it is certainly where we want to start praying, okay? So the first thing we do after that, when we get alone with the Lord, and we're ready to learn, and we're ready to connect with Him, and talk to Him, and get to know Him, is that we repent of our sins. Psalm chapter 24 says this. It says, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. You don't have to get all cleaned up before you give your heart to Jesus. But you know what? After we've given our heart to Jesus, we want to live in a way that's pleasing to him. And when we sin, we want to repent of it right away. Ask the Lord to forgive us. Confess that sin to the Lord. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And a sin is like a wedge. You know, it's, it's like something that is shoved between you and God. And you can talk to God around it, but boy, it sure is harder. So in order to make your prayers powerful and effective, what you want to do first is make sure that when you come to the Lord, you repent of your sins and you let him clean you up. Now, as far as tools go, I would call that like a scraper right here, where you scrape off the sin and the things that have so easily beset you. And to do that, all you do is, hit, is you say, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, Lord. 
Thank you so much for listening to me right now in my prayers. Lord, I confess that I did X, Y, Z. Whatever sin you committed, Lord, I confess it to you. I repent of it, Father. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Cover me with the blood of Jesus. Wash me clean. And Lord, I just thank you that your word says that you have forgiven me. Lord, please help me to not do that again. Change my heart, Lord, so that I go the other way and walk in the ways of holiness and righteousness. That's what heartfelt repentance is, is pouring out that confession to the Lord, asking for his forgiveness, and he forgives you right away. The Bible says he separates your sin from you as far as the east is from the west. Now, that doesn't give us license to keep on sinning, but when you get saved, God takes away your desire to sin. So we just want to keep a clean slate before the Lord. We want to simply confess to him whenever we sin, and that way we can move on in conversation with him, hearing from him, talking to him, and not have that wedge of sin in between us. So that's the first thing you do, the first tool, so to be sure you have clean hands and a pure heart. Now, the second tool you want to get out is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is your key that unlocks all of heaven to you. The name of Jesus is your key that opens the doors to be able to talk to the Lord. The Bible tells us that Jesus is our mediator. In other words, he is standing in the gap between our perfect father who loves us so much, but who requires holiness. He is standing in the gap between our father and us. He is the sacrifice that made it possible for us to approach God. And so we want to always pray in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us in John chapter 14, verses 12 and 13, most assuredly, I say to you, and this is Jesus talking in these verses, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And over and over in the Bible, Jesus taught us to ask the Father in his name, to approach the Father in his name. So the name of Jesus is our key that unlocks the door for us to boldly come before the throne of grace. Now, that verse is actually the next tool, boldness. Boldness, Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Bold prayers are people who get their prayers answered. Here's the tool I want to use to represent boldness today. It's a tape measure. And I want to ask you this. What measure are you asking the Lord for? Are you asking him for things in small measure? Are you saying, Father, if I could just get by, if you would just do a little bit for me. Or are you asking maybe in slightly bigger measure, Lord, I, I could get by plus maybe have a little bit of enjoyment and joy if. Or are you doing what the Bible actually prescribes and instead of limiting the Holy One of Israel, are you believing in God who only does wondrous works? And are you getting out the tape measure? Now, this is a 25-foot tape. So this thing will go and go and go and go and go. Are you saying, Father, I want you to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond all I could ever dare to ask, hope, or think? Are you saying, Father, I believe all your promises? Are you saying, Father, I know you want to bless me. Thank you that I'm blessed already. Father, thank you for all the amazing things that you've already done for me in my life. And thank you for all the amazing things that you're going to do today. Are you saying, Father, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain, Father, which was the prayer of Jabez. Are you asking the Lord for everything he wants to do for you in the measure that he wants to do it according to his word? Very few people are. Most people, instead of rising to the occasion of God's word, instead of rising to the standard and the prescription of what God's word says we should expect from God, most people dumb down their impression of the word, their faith in the word, to match their experience. We don't want to do that. If you're going to be a powerful praying person and pray powerful, authoritative, fervent prayers, my friend, ask for what God wants to do in the full measure that scripture says he wants to do it. That's a lot of measure. 
That's a lot. And this 25 foot tape measure does not even begin to describe all that God wants to do for you. But it's a little illustration to illustrate boldness. Come before the throne of grace boldly, where you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. His grace is undeserved favor, undeserved, unmerited help and blessing and assistance and comfort. And God is ready and willing and eager to pour that out on you today. The next tool we're going to use is the oil of the Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit is not a thing, okay? But this is just an illustration. How many of you know that a little can of this will make everything in your house work just right? And if you have this plus duct tape, you're good to go for every possible repair. Well, in this illustration, we're going to say that this represents the oil and the presence of the Holy Spirit and the help of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is our intercessor. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27 tells us that Holy Spirit will actually help us pray and interpret our prayers rightly to the Father when we fail to pray rightly, when we don't even know how to pray. This is what this passage says. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So this passage tells us that Holy Spirit not only helps us pray by giving us the unction to pray and teaching us what to pray and inspiring our prayers, but he also actually interprets our prayers. He translates our prayers rightly into the ears of the Father. So if you don't know how to pray, if you don't know what to pray, Go ahead and ask the Lord. And I, in fact, ask the Lord this every time I sit down alone with Him. Father, help me pray. I ask the Holy Spirit would intercede for me and through me with moanings and groanings which cannot be uttered. I encourage you to do that too because you will not access the deepest realms of the presence of the Lord in prayer. And you won't access the deepest intimacy and communion with the Lord in prayer until you are praying with the unction and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So that's the next prayer tool you'll want to utilize every single time you pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to translate for you, to give you unction to pray, to in fact pray through you the heart of the Father. And He is ready, willing, and eager to do so. Now the next tool that we're going to use today is the tool of thanksgiving and praise. This is a flathead screwdriver. How many of you have a flathead screwdriver? Or if you don't have one, you know what a butter knife will do if you're trying to unscrew an outlet from the wall or if you're trying to open a paint can. Sometimes just a butter knife will work, but a flathead screwdriver is certainly more professional. It's a great tool. But you know what? It's used often, not only just to unscrew things, but to pry things open. And so what do we use to pry things open in the spirit? Well, in our prayers, we pry open those inner gates. And when I say pry, it doesn't mean that God is reluctant to open to us. No, we have unfettered access, undeterred access, totally open access to him. There is a protocol in prayer because God is a king, a royal king, a most high king, king of kings and lord of lords. And there is a protocol that we use to approach him that is prescribed in scripture. So do we come boldly? Yes, absolutely. But it's also important to come respectfully before the Lord. And to him, what equates with respect is to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. This is what it says in Psalm chapter 100. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. That's Psalm 100 verse 4. This is the protocol for entering the royal court of heaven. The protocol is that when we enter the gates, which is the outer part, then we do so by thanking God. So when you sit down in prayer, this looks like saying, Father, thank you. Thank you for, and then you just list off anything. Thank you for giving me another day of life. Thank you that I woke up this morning clothed and in my right mind. Thank you for giving me food to eat. Thank you that I'm not in a soup line somewhere. And if I am in a soup line, then Father, thank you for the soup. Father, thank you for providing my needs. This is what it means to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. When you do that, you follow protocol and you are allowed 
to get deeper than you would if you were being rude and disrespectful to the Lord. It's a relationship builder. Respect is a relationship builder. And this is how you show respect to the Lord. Now, after you enter the gates, then you enter the courts. The courts are where the throne of God actually sits. And to enter the courts, what do you do? The protocol is to enter the courts with praise. Now, thanksgiving is thanking God for what he has done, being grateful to him and expressing that gratefulness for what he has done. But praise is giving God honor for who he is. That is the difference. Praise says, Jesus, you're worthy. Oh, Father, I praise you for you're so faithful. You are comfort. You are holy. You are light. Oh, I praise you, God, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, God, and that my soul knows right well. Blessed be the Lord, for he has not given us as prey to their teeth. Blessed be the Lord God of our father Abraham from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you. Both riches and power come from you. And in your hand it is to make great. That is praise. Those are biblical praises. Those are scripture verses I was just quoting that are in my heart to praise the Lord with. What's in your heart? Praise him for whoever he is to you. Praise him for his faithfulness, for his provision. Praise him that he is good and he loves you. Praise him for saving your soul, that he is savior. Praise him for who he is. That is the protocol with which we enter into the gates of the Lord, into the courts of the Lord. It's not that we can't come in without that protocol, but... Respect says that we enter God's way. And when we do so, you will have a much more intimate time with the Lord in prayer. God respects you. We have to respect God too. Powerful praying is respectful praying. It's bold praying. It's intimate praying. But it's respectful praying by entering into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Now stay tuned for just a moment. I'll be right back. 